Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Academy's 144 scale B1B Bone Bomber. Now to be honest with you, I've been wanting this kit for absolute eons, purely because I had down here done last year the old Panda one. Now don't get me wrong, the old Panda kit isn't too bad at all, but the biggest problem you've got is finding it. Uh, it's incredibly expensive on the internet because it's become a collector's kit and it was the only one in town. So if you wanted a recessed panel line, pretty decent, uh, B1 in this configuration and scale, it was the only one. So they were literally on eBay going for absolute stupid money. So a lot of people were disappointed because they weren't going to pay that for it. So now we have another new, brand new tool one out. So what have we got? We've got a very nice piece of box art down in here showing the B1, probably over the Nevada ranges. Okay, so in the box, sorry, going around the box, I should say, getting ahead of myself, we've got a uh, little bit down in here, decals done by Cartograph, which are absolutely lovely. We get a mask set, so that's even better. And we've got three versions down on here. So we've got, uh, do was that El Toro's, uh, Dayton's ones I'm, as well, I'm going for. This is actually showing as Fairford in September. So these are obviously the show ones that came over uh, for doing the actual air show. All right, round on the box. It isn't too much to be honest on this one. Got your colour call up from the bits down in there. It is available from the PM store for a measly £28 if you want to get one. So it's saying down here multicoloured plastic. Well, that's what MCP stands for. But if it's anything like their last kit we looked at, which was the new tooled uh, F35, it's in grey. Now, as always, I haven't looked in here, so you're going to see it as well as I do. Yep, that all looks like one colour to me. Okay, so in here we can see straight off the bat, and it's really nice having another one next to it because we can compare the two. We've got screw one with some of the parts down in there. We've got number two. Oh, we do have multicolour because you get black wheels and nozzles and the white bits. Strange. Okay, and we get some decals. So as always, we'll start in amongst here. So we've got a little bit of a crib sheet on how to model, fair enough, for the kids. Uh, health and safeties, as always, with these things. And then we've got two lots of instructions, it looks like. I'm just wondering why we've got two types in here. So where are we starting? That's the question. This is manual two. So I'm wondering if it's an upgrade set. Let's go through and see exactly what we've got in here because I'm a little bit confused, but manual one. Okay, fair enough. So anyway, manual one is talking about putting the cockpit tub in. Again, in this scale, you don't really see much, so fair enough down in there. We've got these little bars going in at the top here, which I assume are for doing uh, like a clip system for the uh, swing wing, uh, that, so it holds it into position. Yeah, it looks like we've got a push fit, which is a really nice way of doing it uh, into these, okay? So that way you can slide those in amongst it. So it looks like a little bit of slip molding perhaps with those, all right? You've got a decal going in. Again, you can't see it at all, don't even try, okay? And those, so it's as simple as one piece wings looks like a little slip piece going in there for that uh, toothed, so they go against each other so you get the correct angles going back and then it's going in. It's not mentioning anything about nose weight in there at the moment, uh, you will need some. I'm sure of it, okay. So we've got these leading edge, uh, these shoulder ones going in there. Nice thing is these are a different color, so the seam line on that isn't that important, okay. Swing wing, obviously, so you can fold it back to how you want. And then we've got the gloves at the back, which actually pinch close uh, around the wings as they sweep forward, okay. And then obviously we've got the ones that go on the top, okay. So very nice with those ones. Then underneath here, we've actually got a bomb bay just showing it's being closed. But the nice thing with this kit, again, uh, following on from their other recent releases, a fully detailed internal bomb bay. And it looks like we've got a load of JBU 38s down in there, uh, GPS guided bombs in racks as they are. So that's actually a really nice touch. So fitting those in, so we've got the ex external or internal fuel tank, I should say, but the external range one, and then inside bomb bays two and three down the back there, you've got multiple ones. So it looks like we've got smaller ones and the larger ones again in there. Down in here, you've got the bomb bay doors and obviously the separator between uh, bomb bays uh, one and two being fitted down there and in the back. Again, beautiful detail on all of those. And it's saying about that satisfying click sound which either means you've broken it or it's in place all right so one or the other looks like a nice little option is one piece gear up as well so if you wanted to do it in flight which would look absolutely lovely in this scale okay and then gear doors being fitted down in there and those being fitted on like that and then obviously doors and gears and everything it's quite complex with this one then it says proceed to manual two 
so we will. So in manual two, which is funny because now we've moved over to color, we can see we've got the actual engine nacelles down underneath with those gorgeous, huge, noisy engines underneath there and the actual uh, splitter boards. And then we are going off. So tail section going in, one piece slip molded tail by the looks of it. That'd be interesting. We'll see that in a moment. And then the tail planes being fitted onto that one. Nose going on there. Still not mentioning nose weight. I'm pretty sure we needed nose weight in it, but I can't remember putting it in, but I'm sure we did. All right, so anyway, that one's down in there like that. The little canards going on the front, the glass going in the top, got a couple of veins here on the back as well. And then down in here, it's talking about the actual decals placement and things like that, as you can see. So there isn't loads, but you've got some nice ones on there. Okay, and then obviously, as we were saying before, we've got the Fairford one down here and the other operational ones right the way through. So that's really very nice indeed odd having two manuals but there we go okay so into the uh, decals we can see it's not a lot of point getting these out they look very nice and because they're done by cartograph you know they're going to be fantastic okay these are one piece ones for these wings so it's very thin and i'll forgive it because if that was just the black line trying to get that straight would be a nightmare so i will forgive it down what you can do is place this down and then cut the inner carrier film out take it out with a pair of tweezers that's normally how i do it okay a couple of other parts down in there to be honest that's a highlight for me because the decals for this thing to say they were like 30 years old and horrible yeah they were they were not very nice at all okay so in my bag i just need to find a knife found one okay so cutting into the bags okay so let's get to the important bit this is the nice bit under here as you can see really very nice details on this kit and again this is where modern kits modern injection molding slip molding things like that shows dividends the way i mean by it is is that it's quite a complex shape and you've always got this thing where they're always going to sandwich like this purely because of the molding but what's beautiful is the lines on the outsides and as it wraps underneath are as crisp as the ones that are flat on top and it's really nice to see okay so if we take a nice good close look at this we can see starting up here in the cockpit it's one piece all molded but again because of the scale you're not going to see much down in there but the big thing is look at the detail on the back of that b1 bang up to date with all the grills, the venting, and all these different areas. You can see it catching it in the light, all of that fantastic detail. All right, so that is definitely a plus. And on the underside, it just keeps giving. It's absolutely loaded. There's those bomb base, a huge bomb base. Um, the tail one, looking very nice. Little nose down in there, okay. These are those parts that actually do the swing wing section, and these are that sort of glove sets. Uh, on the front there on the shoulders again one piece in there and then I have to say that is absolutely beautiful again down in here good solid locating type areas into this one so it's really nice and again very cleanly molded no real sign of flash anywhere on this whatsoever okay no sink marks in only the underside very subtle how they've got this in hopefully you can there you go catching that in the light how subtle that detail is again beautiful attention to detail on something so small being 70 second technically this isn't small it's the same size of a sort of you know uh, a 70 sorry a 70 second sort of flanker size in 144 to give you an idea of how big this is okay or a 48 sort of jaguar so it is quite a lump all right but yeah absolutely blown away with that detail very very nice indeed okay whilst we've got them out here so we've got this other sprue just down in here and again really nice now unfortunately we have got the old ejector pins in this one so if we put this around here you can probably see on these doors running down in here and down in here and pretty much all over there is ejector pins but unfortunately we're gonna have to live with those good side to it is they are very very faint and they're quite all right perhaps that one's not but normally they're quite straightforward to get to love the wiring detail hopefully you catch it in the light there got great wiring detail running right the way over them over the bulkheads all over the parts that's the single piece ones down in here and on the outside you can see for the bombays if you're going to have them closed very nicely done all these sections right the way through so again very nice attention to detail 
Okay, so down onto the wings. Okay, there's our multicolored plastic. Very much matchbox, isn't it? Okay, so as you can see, yeah, that's really very nice indeed. No problem with any of that. You are going to get obviously a seam line running down the middle. Um, hopefully you can see it. It's very difficult because of the light. I haven't captured it, but it is very, very faint. This is obviously because it's sort of slip molded in over here. But again, this is where it shows it. Very, very clever one piece tail like that. And that's basically, it's far easier to take that line out than it would be if it was in two parts, all right? So again, you've got those little vortex generators down in there, everything you might imagine. And again, down here, this is that fuel tank. Okay, that's the actual engine nacelles, looking very nice. The nozzles, the other side of the actual uh, tail, because that tail obviously has just got the open side here. So this is the part that's gonna go in there. And again, working our way up. And then you get to these gorgeous wings, which again, Absolutely fantastic. Lots of wispiness in the injection molding, but we're not worried about that. That's all going to be painted over. It's smooth. And again, one piece detail is just as perfect on the underside as it is on the top side. And again, we've got these slots down in here where it's going to drop in those cogs. What's not to love about it? Very much bringing this bang up to date. And again, no flash, no sink marks, no problems whatsoever. A couple of little things down in here. So we've actually got the gear done in white. So yeah, okay, bit gimmicky, I know, but great for the kids, okay. And then in here, we've got a dual one with black. So we've got some nozzles and obviously the wheels and tires, things like that as well. Okay, but then you are into the smaller scales now and things like that, so we'll forgive it some of its simplicity shall we say okay so we've got a match pair exactly the same down in here and then again if you can see got the detail beautiful uh details on that and again we've got the weapons load so again looks like we've got like mark 82s normal ones gbu 38s and obviously the bigger is it gbu 86 uh very nice as well. Very, very good details on something absolutely small. These tail fins are absolutely incredible. They're beautiful. Very nicely done. Okay, so last up we've got the clear part, which is my new. And again, theirs is far better than was done with the other one. We'll, we'll do a little bit of a comparison in a moment. And to be honest, like we've always said, when you're into this scale, it's very difficult to get clarity through there, but it's a lot clearer than the other one. Okay, but that's nice because it's one piece drop over. It's not a funny shape and a, you know, my other one, it's curved in the inside and stuff like that. That is a beautiful little kit. I say little kit, it's not really. I'm looking at it over there. It's probably the same size as a 72nd scale flank SU-27 or, you know, it, it's bigger than, you know, it's roughly around about sort of Hornet size when it's opened up. So it's not small. So when we do look at it, you can see down under here how this glass work is far, far better than down in here. This one was horrible to get it to sit over and try and mask it. This one is far, far nicer as well. And to be honest with you, I think it's got a nicer profile than this one. This one looks very, very squinty. Don't forget, this is very much an old one. All right, okay. And also when you look at the detail on this one, um, this one we just bung together as a little quick one day build, if I remember rightly. Okay, a little bit of a mojo builder. Okay, that's literally as you see it down there. And then when you look at it compared to the new one, you can see there's a lot more going on, a lot more detail than this one's got. So again, you really are going up to that next level of detail and again around the cockpit areas you can see the difference between the two the venting stuff like that it is very very basic so whilst this is very much been a workhorse i think for a lot of us in this scale if you wanted bombers because bombers are just massive and over the top so 144 is a nice scale to go with okay it's nice to see that this guy can be put to bed and rested and become a kit collector's item because if you want to do a v1 that's where you want to go and again we were talking for 28 pound that's actually quite a bargain it's quite a bit of plastic in there nicely detailed and again the beautiful thing with it is you can do it nice in flight pose with it sweep the wing back things like that it'll look absolutely gorgeous with the bombay doors open as well so it's one of those kits that lends itself very nicely for all you sort of needs so there we go that is an absolute must i have to say it's the academy 144 scale b1b bomb